So we're right in the midst of Hosea, chapter 2. That you will no longer call me Ish, Ishi and no longer call me Baili. For I will remove the, the names of Baal from your her mouth, so that they will be mentioned by their names no more. And that day, new covenant time, I will also make a covenant for them, to the beasts of the field, the birds of the sky, and the creeping things of the ground, and I will abolish the bow, bow the sword, the war from the land, sounds like the new millennial kingdom, and will make them to lie down in safety. I will betroth you to me forever. Israel, yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness, and in justice, and in loving kindness, and in compassion. Well, what's going to happen? And I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, so that Israel will now be faithful after all these centuries. Then you will know the Lord. It will come about in that day that I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the heavens and they will respond to the earth and the earth will respond to the grain, to the new wine and to the oil and they will re respond to Jezreel. I will sow her for myself in the land. I will also have compassion on her who had not obtained compassion. Listen to this. And I will say to those who are not my people, Israel, all these centuries, you are no longer my people. You are my people then, at that time, new year, millennial kingdom, the eternal kingdom, and they will say you are my God. So there is a time when this will happen. I'm going back, since Jesus Christ is the servant of the Lord, Isaiah 42, 49, 52, 53, who is declared to be the salvation of all mankind, who has sprinkled all the nations of the world, purified them from sin, and since Jesus Christ is the new covenant, given as a gift to a future generation of Israel by the Lord, as we just read in, in uh, Hosea, as well as to the whole world. And since his atonement was for all the nations of the earth, and since Jesus Christ has shed his blood for an atoning sacrifice for the sins of all mankind, Isaiah 53, then all mankind on an individual basis of a moment of faith alone in Christ alone is a beneficiary of that new covenant, but not a party to it. We just read in Hosea, they will be restored. The specifics of those benefits depend upon the individual circumstances, such as time period, whether Jew or Gentile, and one particular period of time as defined in Scripture for those circumstances. Jews, a part of the body of Christ, will have their destiny and will benefit from the New Covenant. The Jews of the future, in the tribulation period, where there are no believers until they become believers, it starts out with the tribulation period with no believers because the church all believers are extricated from the planet going to heaven. So now those are believers. The tribulation saints, the old mosaic, the finish up of the last seven years, mosaic law period. Even before the substitutionary atonement was made, benefits were accrued by those that believed in the servant of the Lord, Jesus Christ's substitutionary atonement, from those who prior to flood, those after the flood, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the Jewish period up to the point of the last seven years, their substitutionary atonement was believed in for their sins, after their death, believers in the substitutionary atonement of the servant of the Lord, the seed of the Abraham, occupied paradise, that's not heaven, yet, awaiting their transfer to heaven after Christ's atonement was completed in the first century after God's just salvation of them justified. Romans 3.25. Read that. Well, let's read it. Romans 3.25. It's interesting. Put this together. Study scripture. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in His blood through faith. This was to demonstrate His righteousness because of the forbearance of God. He passed over the sins previously committed and put those who believed in His Son's future sacrifice propitiation, credited them with that on a promise that his son would die, but in history he hadn't until the first century. Then, then he was justified to bring them into heaven. Jesus Christ, resurrected from the dead, brought them to from paradise to heaven when he was resurrected from the dead. In any case, awaiting their transfer to heaven after Jesus Christ's atonement was completed and God's salvation of them justified. God was not justified. There was a promise there. And his enemies, those who knew, and the afterlife, and so on. What's, what are these people? Why were they forgiven? Why was Abraham the friend of God? His sins weren't paid for. 
yet, because in history it wasn't. It weren't. Second Corinthians three six. God, who also made us able, competent, empowered as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. How often is this misinterpreted? God interpreted within context, context, context. Paul, his entourage, those believers of the church in Corinth, and all believers in Jesus Christ in the church age period, by virtue of the context of two Corinthians are declared to be able, competent, empowered servants of a new covenant. How do you become a servant of the new covenant? So, empowered servants of a, of a new covenant. What is, what, what is that? What does that mean? Careful. Be careful to interpret, interpret properly. The new covenant of Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. There are servants of it. How can you be a servant? You can serve the benefit of that. The passage in New Second Corinthians does not indicate that the us in verses verse three six are parties to that covenant, but servants of it. As a matter of fact, they are not parties to it. Since the new covenant of Jeremiah thirty one thirty one to thirty four at all is in view in the passage of by virtue of the comparisons of a covenant and verse six with the old Mosaic law covenant, verse fourteen, the comparison of the ministry of the Spirit and of righteousness with the ministry of death and letters engraved on stone, referring to the Old Covenant, and multiple other comparisons. And since Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, and other passages clearly stipulate that the parties of the New Covenant are only God and all of a future generation of Israel restored to the Promised Land, as we just read in Hosea, then the servants are not parties to the covenant of this passage, but they are competent, empowered servants of it. Got it? On the other hand, one can simply be a competent, empowered servant messenger to others of what the new covenant is and what it does for mankind as Moses and the prophets were. They're not parties to it and not necessarily be a party to it. As a matter of fact, according to Scripture, the new covenant will benefit all of mankind through faith in the one who is the personification of the fulfillment of the new covenant exclusively with a future generation of Israel by uh, his substitutionary atonement, who is the servant of the Lord, Jesus Christ, which sacrifice he made not only for a future generation of Israel, but out of the grace of God for all the nations of the earth throughout history, Isaiah 52, 1 to 53, 12. So just as Moses, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Hosea, Amos, etc., were all fully competent, empowered by the Holy Spirit, servants of the new covenant by virtue of their writings and ministry to people of their generations, and for all generations thereafter, yet none, none were a party of the new covenant. Moses was not a party of the new covenant. So those of the church age, those in view in 2, 2 Cor 3, 6, are likewise competent and empowered servants of the new covenant, but not a party to it. You read John three sixteen. guess what you are? You read it to somebody else. You're a servant of the new covenant, not a party to it. Yet all are beneficiaries of it through Christ by faith. Those benefits for each individual are in accordance with the stipulations in Scripture for his or her circumstances, such as time period, whether Jew or Gentile, and so on. Now, we got the problem here. The book of Hebrews. Because a lot of there is, this, this author is amazing. The book of Hebrews has in view individuals who are Jews and Gentiles, who have believed in Christ for salvation unto eternal life since Christ's ascension, i.e., the church's reception of benefits through the one who himself is the fulfillment of the new covenant with the future generation of Israel, who is the servant of the Lord, Isaiah 52, 1 to 53, 12, Jesus Christ. But it is evident from the context of the book of Hebrews and from all of the other epistles relative to the believers in Christ of the church age that the destiny of believers in this age is not the same as the future generation, which is exclusively and completely comprised of the house of Israel and the house of Judah, under the fulfillment of the new covenant, a single generation of the house of Israel and the house of Judah will all be gathered in the future from the ends of the earth, restored together in the land promised to their forefathers. We just read about that in Hosea. Transformed by the indwelling spirit into individuals with God's laws implanted within their minds, Ezekiel 36. Hence there will no need no instruction or correction whether, wherein they will all live faithful lives, Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, and experience sinless perfection in their mortal lives and more, as it states in Jeremiah 30 to 31 and Ezekiel 36 and 37, also Ezekiel 11. 
So the context of the fulfillment of the new covenant of the future generation of the regathered, restored houses of Israel and Judah, such as stipulated in Jeremiah 30 and 31 and Ezekiel 36 and 37, when compared with the context of the benefits received as a result of the new covenant of those whom the book of Hebrews has in view, indicates that there are, there are two different groups of people from two different periods of time which are in view with some similarities but very significant differences. The context of the book of Hebrews Verses Jeremiah 30, 31, Ezekiel 36, 37. In the book of Hebrews, in view, are individuals who are believers in Christ with a focus on Jewish believers who are spread throughout what is now called the Middle Eastern region as well as parts of Europe. Gentile believers are also applicable as they also will, in this age, inherit salvation and accompanying blessings in the same manner as the Jewish believers of this age will, by faith alone and Christ alone. Romans 1, 1 to 17. But, in the blueprint, in the blue font, this is unlike the fulfillment of the new covenant of an entire future generation of regathered, restored, rejoined houses of Israel and Judah exclusively, which generation of people will and will own and occupy the land promised to their forefathers. We don't have a promised land, the, the, the church age, believers. Experience peace and prosperity there forever. Who will also express faith in Christ and then all will receive salvation unto eternal life and, all, and while in their mortal bodies all will be transformed into faithful individuals, sinless, with an inherent and complete knowledge of God's laws, while in the promised land, as stipulated in Jeremiah 30 to 31 and Ezekiel 36 to 37. You've got to read those two, those four chapters. They clarify it all, limited. Now, I had a pastor tell me from Omaha, said, if you read it this way, start with the Old Testament, God will kill you. And I asked him, what well, what does the Old Testament say about the New Covenant? He says, I don't know. I'm, I'm in the letters of the, of the New Testament. That's applicable to me. Wow, really? The New Testament largely is a, is a fulfillment and a referral back and a corroboration with the Old Testament. They're one and the same in the sense of they, don't corrob uh, they corroborate one another perfectly when they refer to one another. Back to the black font. In view of the book of Hebrews are those Jewish and Gentile believers or all or spread all over the region, including Italy, in and outside of the land promised only to the forefathers of Israel, who already have salvation unto eternal life, they inherit salvation unto eternal life, one fourteen of Hebrews, without being regathered or restored, whose salvation is attested to by signs and wonders, miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, implying that they have received the Holy Spirit within, who are called holy brethren and are partakers of of a heavenly calling, and who have confessed Jesus as their apostle and high priest, and who are immature, not perfectly faithful believers, who need to grow in the faith to become mature believers. All right, what about the new covenant? Partakers. Parties. The situation of the future generation of believers of restored Israel is somewhat similar to that of believers in previous ages, like in Hebrews, such as the reception of salvation unto eternal life through faith, one individual at a time, but the accompanying blessings and responsibilities vary considerably. The timing and place of the salvation unto eternal life of those in the church age is unlike the future generation of Israelites, the latter of whom will be saved only after they all occupy the land promised to their forefathers. The church age believers' salvation is not location specific and certainly not tied to possession and occupation of the promised land at all. Furthermore, the exclusively Jewish believers of the future generation of restored Israel under the new covenant stipulated in the writings of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, will all be mature and faithful believers with an instantly, by the way, with an inherent full knowledge of God's laws, not needing any instruction or discipline relative to God's laws of Scripture, as do the believers of the church age. How disappointed have I been over all these years? Nobody even wants to get into two verses in, together and read it in, in honor context. That's why they came at me, and I thought they were going to beat me up. The guy's speaking tongues at me no, nose by nose trying to evacuate the devil from within because I didn't believe that the gifts, the spiritual gifts of the first century, the miraculous one, were already a, a, appropriate for today. And I said to him, well, Jesus Christ is going to come back, according to Joel chapter 2, in his second coming to renew all his spiritual gifts. How can he renew it if they haven't ceased? And screaming and yelling at me, I had to push him away physically. I thought I was going to get in a fight and have to pull my pepper spray. All three charismatic Christians and they say, we love you. Well, how is it loving me? It's beating me up because I have a different theology because I go by the Bible and you go by your own theology. 
Although, <clears throat> Joel chapter...